Just as the first derivative tells us information about the behavior of our original function, the second derivative tells us information about our function as well. Instead of monotonicity, increasing and decreasing behavior of our function, that the first derivative tells us about, the second derivative tells us about the concavity of our function. If f of x is concave up, then we know that the first derivative is increasing. And we learn from monotonicity where a function is increasing, that function's derivative is positive. Since the second derivative is the first derivative of the first derivative, then everything that f prime tells us about f, f double prime tells us about f prime. That is the relationship. The relationship between f prime and f is the same relationship that f double prime and f prime are going to have. And since f double prime is positive and f prime is increasing, this tells us f is concave up. Now we can remember concave up means shaped like a cup. So regardless of where they start us at, if they start us out and tell us f is concave up, that's the same as telling us therefore f prime is increasing and or therefore f double prime is positive. If they start by telling us f double prime is positive, that's the same as telling us, or we get additional information for free, that f prime is increasing and f is concave up. The relationships between f, f prime, and f double prime are really important to us, so we need to make sure that we could go in any direction. Because f prime has a direct relationship with f and f double prime, most of the time they will give us information about f prime, either graphically or analytically, and then ask us information in both directions. They'll ask us about f and they'll ask us about f double prime. So look for that. Now, if we determine that our function is concave down, then we know that f prime is decreasing. And the monotonicity theorem tells us that any time a function is decreasing, that function's first derivative is negative. So just like we get all of the information for positive second derivative, increasing first derivative, and concave up function, we get the same thing with negative second derivative, decreasing first derivative, and concave down function. We can remember that graphically a function that is concave down is shaped like a mound. So concave up, shaped like a cup, concave down, shaped like a mound. Again, look for being given information graphically or analytically about the first derivative and then answering questions based on that information in both directions. We will revisit relationships of f, f prime and f double prime in some lessons not too long from now, but just as a setup to get you to understand that there is a direct relationship. So just like we had a monotonicity theorem, we've also got a concavity theorem. First of all, f must be twice differentiable on some open interval. In other words, f double prime must exist. The only way f double prime can exist is for your function f to be differentiable twice. If f double prime is positive for all x in the interval in question, then the concavity theorem guarantees us f will be concave up on that interval. As a corollary, as we discussed in the last slide, 
we also get f prime is increasing. If the second derivative is negative for all input values on the interval in question, then the concavity theorem guarantees us that our function is concave down over that entire interval. Again, for free, we get that f prime is decreasing when its derivative, the second derivative, is negative. So there's the concavity theorem. Make sure that you understand concavity of a function. Let's work an example. Given a function f of x, where is this function concave up and concave down? Just like our work with monotonicity, the work here is going to look much the same. We are going to be drawing our tables, we're going to be getting test points, we're going to be plugging test points into the second derivative to determine positive or negative because that's going to tell us where our function is concave up or concave down. So just like monotonicity, we're going to start with the first derivative. You can't get the second derivative unless you go through the first derivative to get there. So the first derivative of f, the 3 pops down front, and 1 third times 3 is 1. So the derivative of the first term is x squared minus 2x minus 3. Now if they had asked me about increasing decreasing behavior, this is where I would set this function equal to 0, I would find the zeros, I would test on either side to see if f was increasing or decreasing, but they didn't ask me about monotonicity, they only asked me about concavity. So all I have to do is continue and find the second derivative, which is the first derivative of f prime. So the second derivative is this function. Now I want to find out where this function equals 0 because on either side of those zeros is where f double prime could change sign. So just as before, I'm going to draw a table. I'm going to put my x values or my test point values and I'm going to clearly show the AP reader that now what is in this column is the sign of the second derivative. It's why we must label what is going on in our table. Because if we're doing the monotonicity test, then we're going to put f prime there. If we're testing concavity, we obviously are going to put f double prime there. So just as I did with monotonicity, I'm going to get test points on either side of where my first derivative equals 0, and I'm going to plug those into the second derivative to see whether that second derivative is positive or negative. So I would plug 0 into the second derivative, and I'm going to get a negative value. I don't care what the actual value is, I just care about the sign. I'm going to plug 2 into the second derivative. That's going to yield me a positive value. So I know that over this interval, this interval of the domain of f, the function is concave down. Over this interval, the function is concave up. I'm going to answer in words f of x is concave up on, now make sure you're looking for where it is concave up, starting at 1 and up to positive infinity, my function will be concave up because the second derivative is positive on that interval. And concave down on or over, either word is acceptable, the other part of the domain. Because I know the domain of f is negative to positive infinity, they have not given me a smaller interval to look at. So there's your first example of determining the concavity of a function, and this is exactly what I would want your work to look like. Make sure that you justify 
your answer. Here is your justify step. This justifies where you got this determination from. Okay, let's talk about where your second derivative equals zero. Where your first derivative equals zero, we learned in the last lesson, where f prime equals zero, those x values are called critical points. But where your second derivative equals zero, those x values are called, and this is important, potential and potential is important inflection points, not critical points. So potential inflection points are where your second derivative equals zero. It's where concavity could change, just as critical points are where monotonicity could change. Now to clarify a little bit, each of these could change not only when the function equals zero, but also when the function is undefined or does not exist. So both of those are places where activity of the function could change, not just where the slope of the tangent line is zero. So make sure you differentiate and know those two vocabulary terms. They're important because sometimes you get instructions that say find the critical points of f. Sometimes you get instructions that say find the inflection points of f. What's the difference between a potential inflection point and an actual inflection point? There is a distinction, and make sure you know it. A potential inflection point is simply where your second derivative equals zero or does not exist. An actual inflection point is where your second derivative does change sign. Inflection points require the second derivative to change sign. This is not true of critical points. Critical points do not require the first derivative to change sign. A critical point is a critical point is a critical point. Anywhere your first derivative equals zero or is undefined, that is a critical point for your function. However, anywhere where your second derivative equals zero or is undefined, is potential inflection points. In other words, if they ask you to find the inflection points, you must test for a sign change. If your second derivative does not change sign, you do not have an inflection point.